Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I hope you're all there. Apologies for that slight technical uh, glitch. Um, I'm Martin. I'm the CEO, CEO of The Specialist Works. Um, and uh, in February, about 100 years ago, uh, I sat down with the What's Possible team to plan our September uh, event. Um, and uh, it was all shaping up really nicely. We, we, we were still uh, buoyed by um, how exciting it had been last September when we got 300 of people together um, in East London to, to share actionable innovation. Um, and we were uh, planning to uh, to do much of the same thing, really to to, um, to do two things, to uh, say what's going on out there that I need to know. Um, if I'm a growth marketer, um, what's important to me? Um, and crucially, what can I do about it? So we, we uh, have always, with what's possible, um, been a fluff and guff free zone. Um, it's all about uh, things that are exciting, new, um, but that you can access uh, now and are going to make a real difference to to you, the bottom line for you. Um, and actually, uh, with everything that's happened over the last couple of months, um, I think those questions are even more relevant. Um, so it's really exciting to, to be able to bring you um, more of this content um, throughout uh, the, the, um, the, the year. Uh, and we intend to keep this going for as long as there's an audience for it. Um, so welcome. Um, we've lost a couple of minutes at the start, so we'll crack straight into it. We, we hope that this is the most valuable 45 minutes of your week. That's what we uh, intend it to be. No pressure. Um, and I'll hand straight over um, to, to uh, Mark, who's your host, and to Jamie, who's your presenter today. Thanks, Thanks. very much. Thanks, Martin. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm Mark Connolly, the Client Success Director at the Specialist Works. Um, my role today is to be the host and facilitator of this session and I'd like to welcome all of our uh, people today from Europe, from the UK and from over in America. Um, the terms of admin on this is that the session is deliberately muted. But if you want to ask any questions, and we thoroughly encourage you to do so, because as you'll see from Jamie's animated passion for this subject, he will answer all of the questions that come through. So please actively encourage you to uh, put questions into the chat box. What I will do at the end of Jamie's presentation is curate those questions together and uh, ask him them on your behalf. And hopefully we can get through as many as possible uh, within the time that we've got left. Um, in terms of managing diaries, I will make sure that we end this promptly at uh, uh, quarter to the hour as uh, originally planned. So um, today's uh, session is around connected TV, as you can see on the screen. And uh, our speaker is Jamie Clilvard, who started his career at Sky TV a few years ago as a digital and video expert. He joined the Specialist Works three years ago and is our director of video, which includes all forms of video. He's a passionate and regular contributor to MediaTel, DigiDay and Campaign and absolutely an expert on this subject. So, Jamie, over to you. Thanks, Mark. Very flattering. Um, and if people can stop emailing me comments on my wallpaper, that'd be great just for half an hour. Um, so now is is a great time to talk about connected television. I think everyone's watching connected television, particularly in these times. And as a result, the, the industry um, has been talking about it quite a lot. Connected television's almost become, dare I say, a little bit overhyped, almost a cliche. Um, and I think if you don't really know what connected television is, well, for starter, a connected television is a TV that's connected to the internet. It, it's as simple as that. But if you don't know what it is and uh, sort of how we apply it to advertising, this presentation is very much introductory. So it's important to give you a little bit of context along the way as well. But there's no bones about it that connected television is or AV, connected AV is the fastest growing form of, of, of AV media. So um, it's here. It's here to stay. The um, the, the people are investing in it. The numbers are, are, are significant. The numbers will be significant. And this slide kind of sums up what I feel about connected television quite nicely. So it says 17 countries predicted to exceed 1 billion in OTT revenue by the year 2023. So that's uh, the UK being the, the third largest market. I've no doubt that those are the numbers. We've already seen staunch investment into it. 
my biggest problem with that um, sentence is the acronym OTT. What does it mean? Uh, we use it so much. And for some reason, and having worked in video ad- advertising for, for a decade now, it is rife with acronyms. Having a digital background as well, I use acronyms every day, unjustified. Um, I always say if you use an acronym without uh, backing it up, put a pound in the pot. So my pot's about yay big. But I think just in terms of acronyms and and busting the jargon, and I see um, trade press articles, I see the way we talk about connected television, the way we sort of write about connected television, and we kind of chop and change between all, all of these acronyms. So first of all, OTT means over the top we all kind of know that but why how does that apply to connected tv i'll I'll sort of talk about shortly then you've got bvod broadcast video subscription vod um svod avod which is advertising um video on demand and tv vod as well loads of those things mean the same thing tv vod is just another acronym for connected tv um broadcast video is advertising vod so I think if you just want to help your understanding and to help ourselves in industry, let's just drop the acronyms. But before I drop the acronyms, it's really important just to, to give you some kind of context about where um, where OTT over the top comes from and, and where CTV, connected TV is, OTT is, is, isn't far by. I often read articles that say, um, you know, what, what does the future look like in CTV slash um, OTT? That doesn't make any sense. It's like saying, what does the future look like in television slash TV? But like many acronyms and, and, and much language we use, uh, OTT came from our, our dear friends uh, over the other side of the pond. And, and forgive me if this is a, a touch blurry, this, this slide, and there's a lot of information. But I guess the point is this. Um, the term OTT probably came from... It was around probably near near enough about a decade now. So back in the old days when people could only kind of watch their, their TV via cable subscriptions, they would class OTT as everything that's over the top of, of your cable subscription, all the, the add-ons, that the Hulus, the, the Slings, for instance, on top of your kind of Comcast cable subscriptions. Now, a cable subscription in America and is eye-wateringly expensive – it's around $200, $200, $250 a month. Um, and anyone on this call in America, feel free to, to troll me after this if, if that's too high. But you can basically, I know you can basically finance a small car for it over here. Now, what people are doing in America and what they've been doing for years is cutting the cord. It's, it's become almost a little bit of a cliche in itself to so cutting the cord because they don't want to spend £200 in, on cable a month. So they're almost getting all of these subsidiary players, all the broadcast of vi- video, the, the long-form video, the short-form video, the snacky, a free video, and they're almost making their own stack for half the price they would they would have paid for cable, for instance. So ergo, there's no over-the-top of your cable subscription anymore. It's just AV. It's just video. So let's just stop using that, that acronym, this side of the pond. You can do what they want in America. But the comparison on landscapes is is really important because connected television is is such a buzzword at the moment, like I say. And it's important that we really don't take um, anyone else's market and compare it to our own because our market is fundamentally unique. So the UK video landscape is is a lot more simpler on, on paper. So essentially, we've got broadcast video in the middle that's what we all know what we all love what we all watch it's a stool watch being going a decade it's what i cut my teeth in and then you've got subscription vod uh it's a new thing but again it's becoming the norm and people are watching tons of the stuff so if we just move those aside a minute the avod i'll use an acronym at the advertising funded video model is something that I find really, really interesting and that's what is growing connected tv growth in this country So that's the the kind of market in a nutshell. Just think of it in three main pillars or don't because, and this was doing the rounds on the internet, things no one asked each other, AVOD or SVOD tonight, honey. So let's just do yourselves a a little bit of a favor and and go further. So just keep it a lot more simpler. Keep it like this. Are there ads or do I pay for it? There are players that do both. So Sky, for instance, you pay an eye-watering amount for, for Sky a month and you'll have to be put up with ads as well. Um, Prime have just started dipping their toes into ad, the ad-funded model, but, but don't let that confuse you. Just is it free or, or do I pay for it? 
and it's the is it free and and do I see do I see ads that that's fundamentally driving growth? So where's this this surge in viewership come from? And this forgive me if this presentation if it's, it's all a little bit blurry, it's quite small for me. So connected TV growth, I guess it's really, 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 really hard to assess the scale of connected TV. And by scale, I mean ITV will tell you they can reach half the UK in one fell swoop through the ITV hub. Technically, they, they probably can, but I know, and just a straw poll of one, that I only use an ITV subscription when there's football on. A lot of people are in that boat. I think ITV subscription count versus active, active users, ITV will say they can reach 30 million. I don't know. ITV, I think, can probably reach 10 to 15 million active users. Netflix is, is fundamentally really hard to get your head around because on here it says Netflix can reach 12.5 million subscribers. I know three or four people, five people who I probably don't even know have my, net, have my Netflix subscription. Everyone gives them out. Um, they'll say they reach 12.5 million subscribers. They probably reach quadruple that. But moving Netflix and broadcast video aside, it's, it's the, the, the purple bars. It's the advertising funded um, channels that have been going great guns recently. And that's down to primarily one thing. That's down to the amount of players and the amount of TV manufacturers that, that are driving growth. Tech's becoming a lot smarter. So we can kind of break players um, up in, in, into kind of two main, um, two main channels, one of them being YouTube, shortier, snackier, and then one of them being your kind of your longer form, all four ITV. And it's the, the kind of the, the, the channels that have had their heritage in YouTube. So your real truths, the, the taste made, you can get a drive, to, drive tribe now on a connected TV as well. And it's that kind of that that nature, that mindset where we've been in online, and that is now getting pushed to us via our via our connected TVs. And I think that's really interesting because now a modern day TV, if you get a TV now, the, the functionality, the layout, pretty much just mimics a desktop, and it's that what's been driving growth. But look what we've been overlooking as well as planner buyers. Um, this is really interesting. This tells me that 230, 200, there's been a 232% growth in OTT connected TV apps in the last 18 months. Now, to put, give you a little bit of context, there's now 56 different apps channels you can buy on and you can buy connected TV through um, in the UK right now. As planners, as, as buyers, as, as advertisers, as, as, as kind of brand managers, when we look at video advertising, we probably only think about all four, Channel 4 and Sky, and that's it. We cut the cord there, and, and it's, it's, it's kind of a huge opportunity. And yes, this opportunity probably wasn't there 18 months to two years ago because it's, really, it's not very scalable. It, it's really hard. But because there's been advancements in, in tech, because there's been advancements in kind of the mindset and, and the, the, the modern-day TV becoming a one-stop shop for, for everything, shorter and long-form viewing – it's now here. It's now, you know, front and center of 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 my as my job as, as a as a planner buyer. But what does this mean for you, and what does it mean for paid advertising? Now, moving players and and, and apps aside, really interestingly, when I think of connected TVs, I probably only think of Samsung, LG. I might think of Chromecast, for instance. What I don't think of it is Roku, and Roku is really weird because Roku pretty much takes two thirds of the market up in, in terms of connected TV ad impressions. Now, Roku have been has been doing this for for for, for years now, and they've got their heritage in connected TV. So, what is Roku? So, Roku is um, it, in layman's terms, it makes a it makes a dumb TV smart. Now. Just, just as a little bit of a comparison. So when I get a brand new TV now, or when, you know, when when people purchase brand new TVs now, they'll find they plug them into a, a set top box and they'll bypass. And they have been doing this for years. They'll bypass the the TV manufacturer's main EPGs, main menus, all of that discovery, all that content will get bypassed because people have a sky box. Roku for twenty, I think it's twenty nine pounds a year, which is two week Sky subscription. Roku um, has it all. It has Spotify. It has broadcast video. It has every single subscription player. It's everything. It is everything you want on one stick. More so, it's got those fifty-six. It's got those kind of forty to fifty different uh, channels that is driving growth. 
Now, if you look at TV manufacturers, so if you take a Roku stick out and look at the TV manufacturers kind of own offering, it's stripped back. It's um, You don't get certain apps on certain TV. That It's not a level playing field. It's still a really immature market. And my TV now is, just to give you a little bit of context, is, I don't, I don't know, five or six years old. The only thing I can access through there is, is Prime, Netflix, uh, the broadcasters, and that's kind of it. I've got no other, no other discovery. Oh, I can't access ITV Hub for it either. So Roku have a lot of heritage. They, it's a great bit of tech. And more importantly, um, Roku has just launched what I think is the biggest development in, in um, video advertising in the last decade. And that might sound a little bit dramatic. So Roku's just launched an advertising-funded model, right? So uh, we're going to push content out there. We'll sell a little bit of advertising. That will flow us. Everyone's been doing that. There's a real uh, – that, that's, that's old news. What, Roku, what the Roku channel has done is, is basically struck deals with the likes of Warner, HBO, um, Sony Pictures, for instance. So f- suddenly the Roku channel has got Netflixy, Amazon Primey kind of content for free. You just, the user just got to put, put up with uh, one minute's worth of pre-roll. That is really, really powerful because that mimics, I guess, the, the, the Hulu model in America that has been doing great numbers. I know, make, I, know I said before making that American um, comparison is wrong, but the Roku channel in America is absolutely exploding. I fundamentally think it will do the same over here. It's a direct threat to subscription board. It's a direct threat to broadcast video as well. Um, it's very, very, very early days. So we kept get, we. I keep being asked about what's the opportunity for Roku. It's it's own for the Roku channel. It's only been there since May. Um, we need to. It needs to mature for for three to six months to a year. I don't think I've even got a rate card at the moment. Um, so whoever, whoever's listening, if you do, please get in contact. Um, but it's very it's very early days. The, the platform has to mature. But I think this is a, a big, big, big move. But I mentioned broadcasters as well, and. This kind of um, the, the rise in connected TV is, is, is I think it's quite funny because I think people are talking about it now because people are watching so much of it. And like I say, it's almost become a bit of a cliche. Connected connected TVs or the word CTV is, is um, been happening for years, years and years and years. And it's the broadcasters who started it all. So I guess we should give them a little bit of credit and. There's loads and loads and loads of value to be had through the broadcasters. They they do the biggest numbers. They have the biggest penetration. It's they'll give they'll you know as if I'm a if want to advertise my brand message, and the um, the broadcasters will give you that scale. But when I run a broadcast video campaign, um, I'll sort of serve sixty to seventy percent of my ad impressions will be served across the TV. Ergo connected television it's been happening for years it's not a new thing um and if you look if i access the um if i access the euros or when it was on or next year when whenever it's on you know a, a prime a premium spot might cost me about 170 pounds um uh, across linear tv across that same that same time across that same match might cost me 35 pounds watching live tv simulcast tv through my app So anyone who says to you broadcast video is expensive, tell them it's nonsense. And if you just look at broadcast video as well, the the, the experience, the fact that it's unskippable, the fact that it utilizes fast first party data, suddenly a a 30 pound CPT um, looks a little bit more attractive. And I think what I've kind of missed out and I guess purposely throughout all of this is YouTube. Now, YouTube's a really, really interesting one because when you think of YouTube, the first thing you think of is on phone, on a PC, or not on a personal device. If you buy a Samsung TV now, you will see a YouTube branded button on that TV. I dread to think how much uh, they paid for that, but it, it's a great little partnership. And interestingly enough, pre-COVID and during COVID, um, we have seen this huge surge in, in connected TV um YouTube connected TV ad impressions, a 78% leap. And that's really interesting because YouTube now is, is kind of a life affirming tool. It does yoga tutorials. You can, um, you can give cooking tip, tip to tip, tip, what tips to do with your, your kids, how to escape your wife. Um, and it's, it's, it's an essential tool now um, at, at, in, in the kind of in the center of the home. And you're just seeing connected TV impressions go up and up and up. But really interestingly, um, 
when I watched an ad on YouTube now across the connect, across my connected television, I'm seeing click overlays. I'm seeing digital ads. They've got low resolution. They've got click here now. And I fundamentally really believe that brands are getting it wrong across YouTube. The creative message needs to be completely different across a connected TV than it, than it does, a, does a desktop. That uh, kind of ad impression is completely the, a different value compared to desktop and con- compared to mobile and tablet. So I think that will become more and more and more. Uh, there'll be more and more focus from YouTube about their connected TV offering. So what's next? So this is a little stat I've, I've nicked from Samsung. And I think it came out again earlier in the week in the trade press, but it's really, really interesting. So Samsung quarter on quarter, year on, so 19 on 20, has seen a 46% drop in the amount of set-top boxes being plugged into their their new age TVs. Um, Similarly, they've also seen an 8% drop in Roku devices being plugged into their Samsung TVs. Now, I think this is really, really interesting because I think this is, although this is a really small audience subset, although we're only talking to a few thousand people, people who are getting the new age TVs, um, the 8K TVs, I think it's really interesting because I think the TVs are that smart now. They They come with that much choice that people People don't want to be paying £90 a month and putting their Sky, their Sky set-top box in it. Conversely, they might not even want – there's no need for a Roku stick now. And so I think TV manufacturers um, have sat up, and I think that they're playing uh, – they'll certainly play a serious game now in connected television. Uh, this guy, Paul Gubbins, who's a programmatic com- com- columnist from The Drum, seemed to think so as well. So he said – Last year, TV manufacturers leaned into the streaming wars with a powerful point of view on the future of consumer engagement. 2020 or 2021 will be remembered as the year connected television viewing became mainstream and in the process provided television manufacturers a coveted seat at the advertising table. I agree with everything he says there. Maybe it won't come as soon as this year, but really, really interesting. I think that TV manufacturers hold the key to the city in in terms of data. So when I buy broadcast video, I buy first party data, but I don't buy anything that's kind of beyond beyond affluence, beyond age. But when I buy, um, when I can buy my ad impressions through a Samsung TV, for instance, they've got stuff embedded in that tv that that it's really cool your your tv knows more about you than than what you do sometimes um so they've got some acr so that's an acronym so auto content recognition so we'll basically know or they'll basically know what video games people are playing um what what um type of console have they got plugged in what are they watching on the bbc what are they watching on freeview um what linear tv ad you've been exposed to as well so all of a sudden that becomes really 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 attractive as an advertiser if i can sequentially target ads um uh, competitor ads or sequentially target my own ad via auto contact recognition to that same device powerful we're, we're almost going into the kind of the, the true reach realms but I think it's important not to get carried away as well. And I often get carried away. Um, but there's some there's some teething problems in connected um, television. They, they're, uh, so essentially, it's we've all been served the same ad two, three times in one ad break. And uh, forgive me for saying this, but I think broadcasters um, should have um, should kind of had more responsibility in terms of managing frequency. Um, I often see P and G ads, especially um, three times in, in a minute as well. There's the connected television; it, it's it's connected to your internet. It's, it's liable to buffering, ad break control. You might get a Burger King ad vi- next to a, a McDonald's ad for, uh, ad, for instance, and resolution as well, particularly for YouTube. I think really interestingly, as soon as you start putting um, as soon as you start putting TV ads or digital ads back across the connected TV from, a, I use an acronym again, a DSP or, or tech for, programmatically, suddenly it's not going to one trafficking team. Suddenly it's going from all different exchanges. It's coming from everywhere. It's coming from, um, it's, it's fundamentally... Yeah, very much a problem. And I think the industry needs to do more um, before it really goes hell to leather with connected TV. I think brands need to, be, to do more as well. So in terms of uh, sort of some future facing predictions, um, I truly believe that, that Netflix will saturate. So we've seen a little bit of a boost um, during COVID for, for Netflix and we kind of expect that. I think they uh, I think they announced they have about 12.5 million um 
12.5 million users added globally or subscribers globally. Um, but I think they are saturating, and particularly for COVID, they were kind of plateauing and, and kind of coming down a little bit of a hill. Um, Amazon have sat up and, and kind of, like I say, introduced themselves to an advertising funded model. Um, when the Premier League was on in, in December, there was a raft of um, brands on. Um, there was kind of eight eight or nine brands on just on rotation against Amazon. Uh, and I think they are doing more and more product placement just as a, as a way to, to sort of generate higher amounts of revenue. I also think um, tech will improve. It has to improve. And I'm a digital planner buyer and I've talked with, with um, DSPs or tech companies or programmatic companies who have a heritage in in sort of mobile acquisition, who have a heritage in mobile display, who have a heritage in, in online video, for instance, who have just suddenly sort of sat up and said, oh, we're going to play in connected TV now. If you partner with those kind of DSPs who haven't got it right, who haven't done the pipe work, then you're you're more liable to, to get it wrong. And like I said as well, I think YouTube will will fundamentally play a huge part in in the uh, in in the connected TV space. They have to. The impressions uh, the 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 impression share you now you, you get now across YouTube campaigns across connected TVs is going up and up and up and up. But we just need to be more responsible as advertisers to make the right creative because, the, like I say, that ad impression when I'm on my sofa, I probably less I'm less likely to skip is completely different to when I'm sat forward and I'm just my hand or my cursors hovering over the, the skip function. Um, and that's kind of it. But I think if you would take one thing away from, from this kind of this, this short presentation, it's just to start planning differently, to start asking questions, to start not just saying how, how um, out of my target audience, what percentage what percentage, what percentage of the AV relates to video? What percentage of the AV relates to TV? Start asking questions. Start asking how much, right, out of my target audience, how much watches subscription VOD? How much of my, um, how much of my target audience watches um, live TV simulcast through apps? How, many of my, how much of my target audience has got uh, connected televisions? How of my target audience watches those kind of these smaller boutique channels um, that, that's driving growth? And that is a fundamentally, that's the one thing I'd take out from this, which conversely, we can help you out on the specialist works, but that's not a self plug. So that, that's kind of it. It's very broad um, and it's very introductory. And I could go on and on and on about connected TV. I could go on and on and on about the, the, the techie side of things. But look, it's here to stay. We should start planning against it, but we should start being sensible about it at the same time. And don't jump on the bandwagon for the sake of jumping on the bandwagon. Thanks. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you very much indeed. And as I promised at the beginning, uh, an energetic, passionate and committed uh, presentation. So thank you for that. A lot of people no have been commenting on your enthusiasm. Uh, being infectious, which is great. This is great. Um, so a couple of questions have come through regarding the presentation. What I forgot to say at the beginning is that uh, you can have access to this. You can have a copy of this. Uh, the contact details are on the screen now for uh, Jamie anyway and uh, we will also uh, have this webinar available uh, to download at, um, uh, in the next couple of days so you'll be informed about that. So um, if there are any questions uh, coming through can you please uh, keep them coming? I've got uh, about a dozen already so I'll get through as many of those as I can in the 12-15 uh, minutes we've got left. So Jamie a quick answer is a good answer yeah. Um, providing that we get the answers uh, uh, across that you want to get across. So um, there's a couple of questions that have come through in terms of uh, where does this sit at the client side, but also at an advertising agency side? Is connected Ooh. TV a digital or a TV discipline? Crikey. Uh, it is very much, I'm going to be really on the fence and say both. It sits in the middle. Um, so fun, So for <laughs> Connected TV and the way to do it well is, is to buy it programmatically, to buy it efficiently, to, to real time bid it as, as well. And, and I think because it, can, it can generally come at a, quite a toppy price. So if you're real time bidding it, buying efficiently and you're buying it programmatically, of course, that sits within a, a digital team for a for to expect a, a TV planner buyer to pick up the buying all of a sudden um, via programmatic means is, is a big ask. It's not realistic. But that said, if you're putting 
if you're putting TV ads on a digital plan, put them on the TV plan. Have someone who I've sat on both sides and I've also sat in the middle. And I think we need to be um, we need to be more reactive to that um, as agencies. We need to have video specialists. We need to have connective TV specialists. Every good agency I know has one. But I think expecting a TV team to suddenly change their craft, it's not realistic. Conversely, from a digital person to st- suddenly just start buying across a connected TV willy-nilly without having a consequence to how that's impacting a TV ad, also not realistic. So there has to be a halfway ground, and that's a really kind of um, sort of a, a political, a politically correct answer, isn't it? But it, it's true. So I'll, I'll go freestyle here and ask my own question on that then. So are you saying that the disciplines of planning television should encompass SVOD, BVOD, television, broadcast uh, cable platform sky etc cetera, etc cetera. Yep. so the disciplines of planning should cover all of that yeah but the digital specialism comes in to the technical delivery of it because mm-hmm. the delivery of a tv broadcast ad is different to the delivery of a ctv etc yeah, uh, et totally but then at the same uh, we have to be care that's exactly right but then we have to be careful we're not just asking digital people to be our to be our buyers and then the tv people to be our planners because i think it has to work go the other way around as well suddenly if we're buying across an, an exchange and we can have a, an outlook on connected to the uh, we can have a, a view on a connected TV impact and display impact and, and online video impact and, and YouTube impact in terms of buying against the same IPs and we can start buying sequentially, then that is the that's that's the kind of responsibility of, of a digital um, of a digital planner buyer as well. So, but but yeah, you, in essence, you're right. Okay, so um, Andrew Greaves from the Idea Hunter says, which brands are using CTV well? Is there a client type that is ideally suited to CTV? Yeah, um, I'll tell you, brand, I'll flip that on the head. I'll tell you what brands aren't using CTV well. Um, there is a gap in what brands we see on TV and what brands we see on connected TV. The brands we see on connected, I'm not going to name any names, it'd be unfair. The brands we're seeing on connected TV now, you can tell is bought, um, is getting planned and bought outside of inside of digital teams. So the brands being sort of mobile games really 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 heavy across connected tv the same mobile games we see online time and time and time again uh and often they've got a, they've got a click to overlay and probably more often than not they're they're being um it's their performance-led campaigns that they it's that falls under app acquisition but connected tv isn't the tech for it but the brands we're seeing do it do it well um the brand so i i watch d play um which is kind of uh, quests um which is which is quest video service so it's uh, kind of the the wheelie dealers and the antiques and the um, salvage hunters because i'm sad but the brands i see on there do it really really well i see on tv as well it's a great frequency builder um sainsbury's every single food shop now because they're getting so heavy with messaging life affirming messaging as well because they're being a bit more responsible with their messaging they're buying mass reach and they're buying mass reach really 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 well so just i just have a Keep an eye out because some brands are doing it bad, but but some are doing it really really well. And it's those those digital brands, um, those brands that lend itself to digital platforms, probably aren't getting it aren't getting it done well. Okay, uh, Peter Birch, managing director of RB Consulting, says it's a really helpful overview. Thanks, Jamie. Can you please share examples of what creative works best on CTV? So I, I guess the question yeah. there is: is the creative different than it would be on a broadcast linear platform? No, abs- no absolutely not. The creative is the same. I think the, the again the creatives that don't work are the the, the really heavy overlay, the, the fast creatives as well. I think. It's generally good practice to, to put as much branding in the first five seconds as possible. So I guess you could use a bit of a, a YouTube creative premise there and make it work on connected TV. But absolutely, just because of the mindset and we're so there's the sit back nature of it. Get your t- it's, you, you're, and you're serving on a TV and that experience is, is pretty much the same. Just get your TV creative and, 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 and use it across connected TV instead of going the other way. Thank you. Um, so uh, Chris Terry from the Department of Work and Pensions says, uh, great presentation. Which DSPs are the best ones and oh. which ones have not done their pipe work with CTV, please? Yeah, I'm not going to I'm not going to answer that. But in terms of haven't, uh, but 
who the the, the DSPs um, or the SSPs that that do it really really well uh, are the spot X's that, that who are fundamentally built their offering on connected TVs as well. Um, You've also got the likes of Trade Desk who do it really, work really, really well. I'll tell you after who doesn't, but it's probably not fair on this. <laughs> Especially if they're on here, there may be a Especially question. Especially if they're on here, yeah, yeah. So, um, okay, so look, there's a couple of questions, and for speed, I'm going to lump these together. A um, f- couple of clients have come back and asked a question around brand safety. Mm. So uh, the, the questions which I'll link together are, what brand safety is in place for connected TV versus broadcast TV? Yeah. Is advertiser video on demand under the same broadcast rules as Clearcast has to check for the validity of claims on BVOD? And um, w- which is the other one? The other one is about pricing. Mm-hmm. So a, I know you touched on it in the presentation, but I just want to probe you a bit further on this, is that yeah. if I'm to buy a... Uh, all adults ITV, it's going to be about six to eight pounds cost per thousand, and yet broadcaster VOD is going to be around forty to fifty pounds. Explain yeah. again why that's a justified shift in price. Okay, so first of all, in terms of Clearcast, um, there's no clear. There's there are and there aren't. A, it's 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 not universal across Clearcast across connected television. Every single SSP will have their own vetting process, and they'll take all of these regulations fr- from Acer. Again, they can guarantee brand safety or try to guarantee brand safety. I don't really use the word guarantee um, by using um, IP credentials, but everything on broadcaster video has to go through Clearcast. It's exactly the same as TV. In terms of um, in terms of costing and pricing, I always look at it like this. I always look at it like broadcast video. It's got some great traits. The fact that it's user activated is one of them. So that ad's shown because the users clicked to show, uh, clicked on the play button. You're also getting about 90 plus completion rate as well. So 90% of my ads going to be watched to the end. Really, really valuable. You also use first party data as well. So instead of the bar broadcast inferred data, you're targeting people who are 18 to 34 because uh, they've said they're 18 to 34 on, on their login data. Really, really useful, really, really robust. You've also got, like I say, about 70% of impressions served across the TV. Bar one sales house, you, you get um, one impression served for every one viewer. If 70% of my impressions are being across, served across TV, I'm probably not watching TV alone, but so you get lots of lots of incremental bonus views, which drives our eCPM down. So you've got all of those little micro factors that suddenly a £30 um, CPT and effective, the eCPT is probably worth somewhere between 15 to £20. Pounds. Um, it, it's, it's a safe pound if there ever has been. TV, I'm not going to bash TV. I could do it to the cows come home. Let's set up another quest. Let's set up another session on that. No, okay, <laughs> no. all right. So but if, if I'm a client listening to this, the two yeah. things I'm taking away from that is that putting an ad in the UK specifically onto a broadcast television channel goes through a bunch of security and brand safety checks to know that it will be in a right, safe environment and all yeah. the claims made in that ad are true and vetted. It's mm-hmm. not the same. For, it doesn't go through the same process for connected TV, but it goes through the process of the individual platforms that are broadcasting that content, which hopefully would be the same, but it's not to the same level. Okay, fine. So that's the first thing. And the second thing, just to summarize on the pricing, if you are putting adverts out on a mass broadcast TV channel, you're going to hit 8 million people in the middle of X Factor, but there will be some wastage and that's why the price is reflected in that way. If I'm going yeah. to put it out on connected TV, you genuinely know who is watching that. Therefore, the co- effective cost per thousand, i.e. reaching those 100 people, is probably more targeted. So therefore, mm-hmm. it's a better audience for you if you want to target audience segmentation. But secondly, that price differential isn't as steep as it seems on paper, simply because you're not having as much wastage. Yeah, absolutely okay. right. Fine. Yeah. Perfect. Um, question from Richard Hicks, uh, COO of CS, C Screens. Um, so this might be a bit of a loaded question. Yeah. Where would you position outdoor TV if it's around premium TV content? Um, interesting. Uh, one I haven't really thought about, but 
outdoor TV. I think if it's got TV in it, you would position it and you would put it on TV plans. I think it, it's just obvious. But I think outdoor TV is is interesting. It's interesting as well. It's like TV. Suddenly, at the same time, it's being it's being bought programmatically. It's bought, being bought under real time um, bidding. It's it's become a digital buy. It's a heavy offline buy now become digital. But I would fundamentally use it. I'd use it dually. I'd use it as a frequency builder. I'd definitely plan at the same time my tv's on people are away people are viewing outdoors because they're away from the tv but if i can build that frequency if i can build that recall if i can talk to that same user via outdoor means and then a few hours later on their tv really really powerful i think what when outdoors done really well it's when you've got really really smart geo your geo is talking from your outdoor location it's talking to your tv you're, you're buying around the same location and that's when it's done really really well Okay, thank you. Um, we've got a question from Thomas at Thomas Chapman at Adobe Systems. Uh, if the I pipe up, <laughs> I'm sure you mean that in a loving, caring, and <laughs> yeah. sensible, professional way. Yeah. Um, if the eyeballs are there, the scale is there, and the tech is there, then what is holding advertisers back for investing more money and heavily into CTV? Yeah, that's a great question. Hi, Tom. By the way, I think. Um, I th- I think there's 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 a grey area about what connected TV actually actually means, and I think um, so. I think there's two things. I think it's coming out of, of planning teams, um, and, and probably rightly or wrongly, I think a number of um, planner buyers have been looking at ITV, looking at Channel Four, looking at Sky, all of their professional careers, and suddenly you've got this kind of bot monster pop up, and the fact that it's brought programmatically doesn't probably lend itself to being put on on TV plans. So there's an education piece internally that needs to be done as well. Um, externally and to clients, I don't. I think we need to get our head around the the price, the cost of stuff. So, like you said, Mark, it, it can cost TV if, can cost five pounds. The price in connected TV um, costs around eighteen to thirty pounds as well. And it's it's the same as it's the same argument broadcast video has. It's that price point that's always been the um, it's always been an underlying factor, and it's always been uh, it's always putting brands off a lot. But like I said, the, the viewing worth is totally different. And and suddenly, I think, but I think as an industry, we need to meet in the middle a little bit more. Um, I think if we look at this this co- if we look at during COVID, for instance. Um, online video now is, is costing me about five pounds it would have cost me about 25 pounds pre-covid that's because we're in a soft market but i think the fact i think broadcasters and i think um ssps as well need us need need to allow us to, to trade like that as well to make use of these tv spikes to get to, a, a, to fundamentally buy cheaper ad impressions but i think it comes out of price i think it comes down to education Okay, um, I'm conscious that that's the full 45 minutes, but I'm going to take the liberty of carrying on for another few minutes just because we started late. I'm hoping everybody can stay and join us, but um, we will finish uh, very quickly. I've still got a few questions to get through. So um, a question from Ian Duffy, who's head of investment at TI Media. Um, He prefaces by this saying that they are primarily a print company. Um, So as a non-AV media person, forgive me, but will TV manufacturers become media owners as manufacturers wouldn't want to join together to create an amalgamated audience? Well, that's a great question. Um, That's a really good question. I think so. I think it's all about estate. So TV manufacturers won't become... they they are become, they have become media owners. They are become they they are becoming kind of media owners of sorts. But they need to make their own estate. If we get LG, for instance, I'm I'm not sure there's an LG player. Stop me if I'm wrong. But um, every tile, every app they have on there is, is is owned by someone else. So they need to own. They need to almost curate their own content. They need to uh, launch their own channel, like we've seen Samsung have over here. It's for in- Samsung TV is something that's really interesting and I'd encourage you to, to all explore. Um, but we've seen Samsung do it. We've seen Samsung in the last two years or, or 12 months make a massive play in the market. Really interesting stats that their TVs are becoming plugged in less. We've seen viewership surge as well. And I absolutely think next year or the year after, um, yeah, I think TV manufacturers will definitely become more like media owners if they have their own content like Samsung does. Okay. Um, Annie Kelly from AdMaxim. Um, excellent presentation, Jamie. Thank you. How do you measure engagement on OTT and how yeah. easily is it to cross match and follow an audience across devices, TV, iPad, and mobile? Yeah, great, great question. Um, really, 
yeah, so in terms of engagement, there's of course the the engagement electric uh, metrics such as completion rate, for instance, um, which is kind of a stalwart. It's always been there, but then it's hard because we can't put a pixel in TV um, yet. That can't be done. So tracking anything like like site visits is is bloody difficult. Um, and in terms of tracking cross device, that it. In terms of tra tracking cross device, that also presents its problems because, again, we can't put a pixel in the TV. But there are means and ways where we um, we can buy cross device, but not in that kind of that true reach way. More in that that kind of model inferred way. But it's something that look, in America they do it really really well because in America you can serve a, you can serve a um, you can serve a, a video ad via via the Wi-Fi connection via that IP there's no such thing as gdpr in america pretty much so um it's difficult it becomes of its challenges over here but in terms of buying that that true device reach we can across pc we can across um um tablet we can across mobile but when it comes to connected television to add that on top and buying true reach that way there's a there's a barrier in front of the tv at the moment just because of the nature of the tech inside but it's, it's interesting it's a great question it's one, it's the one i always look at Okay, mate. Well, I appreciate that. We've, we've got, fortunately, we've run out of time. We've got another dozen or questions or so that are still there. So if you uh, ask a question, I didn't read it out, then apologies from me. But uh, in the interest of time, uh, I'm going to call it there. So please uh, email uh, Jamie with the uh, email address that's on the screen. Um, and I uh, know that he will get back to you as quickly as he can. Um, so thank you to Jamie. I Thanks appreciate so that immensely. It was really interesting, and, I, and I'm sure we're going to get uh, lots of great feedback on it. Um, I just want to thank everybody for coming along to the session today. Um, our next session in our What's Possible Bite Size program is next Wednesday, the 20th of May, uh, 2 p.m. UK time, when uh, we'll be talking with uh, Dr. Christina Balzano, uh, from Walnut and Limited, who will be navigating our new normal and talking about the psychology of lockdown and how that all has affected us all. So thank you very much indeed for tuning in. I appreciate all of that. And as I said, any questions, please contact the very enthusiastic and ebullient uh, Mr. Clilford. Thank Thanks you. Thanks very much. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks. Bye.